cool. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about some research projects we did at OpenAI Robotics team. Uh, one big picture problem at our robotics team is to develop the algorithm to power general purpose robot. If you think about how we humans are living this world, uh, we can cook, we lift and move stuff, uh, we assemble items with different tools. We fully utilize our body and especially our hands to do a variety of tasks. So to some extent, we are general purpose robots, okay? <laughs> so that's, we apply the same standard to our definition of such a thing. So a general purpose robot should be able to interact with a very complicated environment of the real world and able to manipulate all kinds of objects around it. Okay. Uh, However, unfortunately, most uh, consumer-oriented robots nowadays are either uh, just toys or very experimental or focus on uh, specific functionalities. S and they are robots like um, uh, factory arms or medical robots. They can uh, interact with the environment and operating uh, Tools, but they usually operated by humans, so human controls every moves, or they just play back a pre-programmed um, tra trajectory. Uh, they don't really understand the environments, and they cannot move autonomously. So in our projects, we're taking a small step towards this goal. And in this, uh, we try to teach a human-like robot hand to do in-hand manipulation by uh, move the objects. This is a six-phase block with open air letters on it. Uh, move it to a target orientation. We believe this is an important problem because a human-like robot hand is a universal effort. Imagine we can control that really well. We can potentially automate a lot of tasks that are currently done by human. Unfortunately, not a lot of progress has been made on human-like robot hand uh, due to the complexity of such a system. Why it is hard? Okay, so first of all, the system has a very high dimensionalities. For example, in our robot, which is, uh, as you can see, this cool illustration, uh, shadow dexterity hand, it has 24 joints and 20 actuators. The task is especially hard because during the uh, manipulation, a lot of observations are occluded and they, they can be noisy. Uh, for example, your sensor rating can be wrong and your sensor rating can be blocked by the object itself. Moreover, uh, it's virtually impossible to simulate your physical word 100% correctly. And and our approach for, tech, uh, for tackling this problem is to use reinforcement learning. We believe it is a great approach for learning how to control robots, given that we have seen great progress and uh, great success in many applications by reinforcement learning. You heard about uh, OpenAI 5, uh, the story of playing AlphaGo, and it will be very exciting to see how reinforcement learning can not only interact with this virtual world, but also have an impact on our physical reality. Um, there, there's a one big drawback of reinforcement learning model. Uh, in general, uh, today, uh, those, most of the models are not data efficient. You need a lot of training sample in order to get a good model trained. One potential solution is you build a robot farm, okay? You just collect all the data in parallel with hundreds of thousands of robots. But imagine, just given how fragile a robot can be, it is very expensive to build and maintain. And if you think of another problem, a new problem, or you want to work with a new robot, it's very hard to change. Uh, furthermore, your data can get invalidated very quickly due to small changes in your robot status. 
Instead, we decide to take the same to real approach. That is, you train your model, everything simulation, but deploy that on physical robots. Here is a here shows how we control the hand in simulation. The hand is moving the object to a target orientation as shown, the target is shown on the right. So whenever the hand achieves the goal, we just sample a new goal. So it just keeps on doing that. And we cap the six, uh, number of success at 50. This is our physical setup. Everything is mounted in this giant metal cage. It's like this big. <laughs> and uh, the hand is mounted in the middle. It's surrounded with a motion caption system. It's actually the system that uh, people use for filming special effect uh, films. Like the actor has dots on their body. It's kind, kind of similar. Uh, this system tracks the five fingertip positions in the 3D space. We also have three high resolution cameras for capturing images as input to our vision model. And we, we, our vision model predicts the uh, position orientation of the block. However, uh, our proposed seem to real approach might fail dramatically because there are a lot of uh, model difference between simulation and reality. If your model overfit to the simulation, it can perform super poorly on the real robot. In order to overcome this problem, we decide to take we use reinforcement learning, okay? We train everything simulation so that we can generate technically, theoretically infinite amount of data. In order to overcome the same to real difference, we use domain randomization. Domain randomization refer to an idea of randomize different elements in simulation so that your policy can be exposed to a variety of scenarios and learn how to adapt. Eventually, we expect the policy to be able to adapt to the physical reality. Back in, this idea is relative news. Uh, I think it first proposed in 2016. The researchers tried to uh, train a model to control drone, like flying across like furniture or the indoor scenarios. They randomized the colors and texture of the walls and furniture. And without seeing any real world images, uh, they show that it performs pretty well in reality. At OpenAI, we use the same approach to train a vision model to predict the position orientation of the objects. Uh, as you can see, some of the randomization looks totally unrealistic, but somehow it worked very well when we feed the model with real images. And later, we also show that you can randomize all the physical dynamic and simulations, and this fat robot trained with domain randomization worked much better than the one without. Let's see the results. Okay. Um, okay. I usually struggle a little bit at the first goal. Oh, yes, OK. The ding indicates one success. I This video will keep on going until goal 50. So it's very, very long. But I personally found it very soothing to look at it. I love it. <laughs> I guess that's enough. Okay, uh, <laughs> uh, this is our uh, like full setup of the training. So in the box A, um, we uh, generate a large number of environments in parallels in which we randomize the physical dynamics and the vision appearance. And based on this, we train two models independently. One is a policy model, which takes in the uh, fingertip position and object pose. Uh, and the goal and output a desired drawing position of the hand so that we can control the hand. Another model is a vision uh, that takes in three images from different camera angles and output the position orientation of the object. When we deploy this thing into the real world, uh, we combine the vision prediction based on the real images together with a fingertip position tracked by the 
motion capture system and feed that into our uh, policy control model and output action so that then we just uh, send it to the real robot and everything starts moving just like the movie shown. Uh, when we train our policy control net model, uh, we randomize all kinds of physical parameters in the simulator, such as uh, masses, uh, friction coefficient, motor gain, damping factor, as well as noise on the action on observation. Uh, for our vision model, we randomize camera position, lighting, material, texture, colors, blah, 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 and it just worked out. <laughs> For our, mod, uh, for our model's architecture, I'll just go very quickly here. Uh, the policy, ha uh, it's a pretty simple recurrent neural nets, has one layer of fully fun connected layer uh, and the LSTM. The vision model is a straightforward multi-camera setup. Uh, all the three cameras share this ResNet stack and followed by spatial softmax. Our training framework, uh, is a distributed and synchronous uh, PBO, Proximity Policy Optimization Model. It's actually the same uh, framework used for training OpenAI 5. Our setup allowed us to generate about two years simulated experience per hour, which corresponds to 17,000 physical robots. So it's a gigantic robot factory in simulation. That's awesome. When we deploy our model in reality, we notice a couple of uh, strategies learned by the robot, like uh, finger pivoting, sliding, finger gating. Those were also commonly used by humans. And interestingly, we never explicitly give rewards or encourage those strategies. They were just emerged autonomously. Let's hear some see some numbers. Um, we, in order to comp com compare uh, different versions of models, uh, we deploy the models on the real robots and count how many success uh, uh, the, the, the policy can get up to 50 uh, before it is a drop the block or timeout. We first try to de deploy a model without randomization at all. It got a perfect performance in simulation, but as it looks, uh, you can see it's zero success median, super bad on the real robot. Then we adding domain randomization, the policy become much better. It got 13 success mediums, maximum 50. Then we use uh, RGB cameras and our vision model to track the objects. The results only the performance only dropped slightly, still very good. Uh, the last one, I think this one's very interesting um, because uh, the, I just mentioned that our policy is a recurrent neural nets. So like LSTM, it has uh, internal memories. We're interested to see how important this memory is. So we replace this LSTM policy with the feed forward nets and deploy that on robot, and the performance dropped a lot, which indicates that memory play an important role in sim to real transfers. Potentially, the policy might be using the memory and try to learn how to adapt. However, um, training in randomized environments does come with a cost. Here we plot the number of success in simulation as a function of uh, simulated exper experience in measured in year. So if uh, you don't apply randomization at all, the, the model can learn to achieve 40 success with about uh, three years simulated experience, but in order to get to same number, like 50, uh, 60, uh, no, sorry, 40 success, um, in a fully randomized environment, it took 100 years. Okay, to quick summary, we've shown that this approach, reinforcement learning plus training simulation, plus domain randomization worked on the real robot, and we would like to push it forward. 
Uh, thank you so much.